guys and gals, I'm Pal, and thank you so much for watching my channel through, I think, we are now up to 100 videos or more. That's amazing. Uh, at the time of me recording this, we have 53 subscribers, and probably by the time this, is, this video is out, there will be up to 2,000 views total for this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching this entire time. It's been a really good adventure for me, and I'm really grateful to have such a good, uh, such a good viewer base. Thank you guys. Now, anyway, hey guys and gals, I'm Paladin, and welcome back to Okami. Last episode, we came into Taka Pass and fought Waka again, and this time he had an, he had yet another prophecy for us. He foresaw a quest about dogs, and the dogs were gone, or something like that, and so. Yeah, it's a little bit vague and very strange, but I think that's just how Waka is. He's a very strange person, or fruity. If you want the definition of that, I believe it's something who, someone who's not right in the head. Yeah, that seems like Waka. He seems a little bit too grandiose, even though he looks sort of like a clown. Also, he can fly with his hat, which is strange. But anyway, this episode... Now that we're next to the Guardian Sapling, we might as well bloom it, because we have a lot to do this episode. Which, some of that includes stray beads, some of it includes battles, some of it includes just wandering about while I talk to you about random stuff. Which is what this channel is all about, and what has been doing for the past, wow, seven months? Eight? Wow. Actually, yeah, eight months this channel has been in existence. Wow. That's amazing. Actually, no, it's seven. It is seven. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, anyway. Sorry, I'm reminiscing. <sighs> okay, let's go ahead and bloom this and get some beauty. Excellent way to start out an episode. With a failed brush technique. No, with bloom. Let's do this. Da 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 Sorry, I just felt like humming that. If you guys know me at all, you'll know that I love to sing. Even if my voice isn't the best in the world, at least <laughs> I'm not tone deaf or just don't have a bad voice or... Actually, there, there's one up here that has like an operatic voice, which is really cool. He has a really good voice. Anyway, Taka Pass is back to normal now. W without it, the curse zone, it'll be easier to find brush techniques. But first, that big windmill has really piqued my interest. Didn't that half-baked prophet mumble something about it? Uh, whatever. It's not going anywhere anyhow. Let's take a good look around Taka Pass, okay? I'm a bit worried about the people who live around here. Which basically means there are a lot of side quests for us to cover, which actually, in all fairness, there are. Now, I could just jump down to the cliff here and land right next to the people down there, but we actually don't need to talk to them, although they do have side quests. They actually have two side quests for us, but we already talked with them once, so I don't want to do that. Also, there are some animals up here which I want to take advantage of, which sounds really strange, and feed, so I'll go ahead and do that. Now, remember, we started out this episode with 123 praise. Now let's see how much we ended off with. Probably a lot. There are a lot of animals for us to feed, and they actually give us a good amount of praise. I think more than any animals before have given us, so we want to definitely feed them. Also, I thought there were animals over here. I thought I saw some. No? Okay. Well, I actually want to run... Oh! Horses! I was correct. Okay, let me feed these, and then I'll continue what, what I was saying. Eight praise! You can see what I mean by uh, horses and animals giving us a lot of praise. Now, something I really want to go into, and that is the fact that I have, I have been meaning to mention it for a long time now, for many episodes. Also, we can do nothing with that chest right there. 
I've been meaning to mention this for many episodes since, actually, legit, the first episode. But I just never really found a place to fit it in, so I think I should just go over it now. And what I'm what I'm talking about is, you may notice in the cutscenes also the camera's really acting weird. Uh, and these foxes eat meat, by the way. But anyway, in the cutscenes, they can seem a little bit grainy. Like, they seem a little bit pixelated at times. And that's because they're actually not pixelated. It's the art style of this game. During a lot of the cutscenes, there are actu there's actually a parchment effect. So it looks like all the the cutscenes took place on a parchment. So they're, like, hand-drawn, like the ancient Japanese tales. So um, it looks like parchment. But the thing is is Ready at Dawn Studios, the company that localized this game, they actually had to remake a lot of this game because Capcom itself didn't have the files. But one of the things, one of the many things they did in this port was they toned down the parchment effect a little bit. So, yeah, it it isn't nearly as obvious, so it can lead one to believe that the the quality is low. So, yeah, that's that's something I have... Not against this game, but it's something that I, I should mention so you don't hold it against the game that some of the cutscenes look lower res, which they actually aren't. They're they're not post -re they're not uh, pre-rendered. They are rendered within this game. It just they have a filter over them that isn't always clearly obvious that it's a filter and not just bad graphics. So yeah, um, another thing is. One thing I, I really, it's not a big thing that I have, but it's something that's a bit of a little bit of a peeve of mine, is, I'm not sure if this is with all the ports of the game, but for the Wii port, if, look, if I hold my, my control stick straight forward, I'll curve to the left a little bit, which I do not like at all, and I, this is a little bit w really out of place for me to put in the video, but you see that I curve to the left, I am holding it straight forward. No two bones about that, or no bones about that. I'm holding it forward, but I'm curving. I'm not sure if that's with all ports, but with the Wii port, it does that. And it isn't my nunchuck before you say, pal, bro, just switch nunchucks. It's actually not the nunchuck. I've tried multiple nunchucks for this game, and all of them do this. Now, I thought maybe it was just a thing with every single nunchuck that maybe the axis, the, uh, the Y axis is a little bit messed up. So in Skyward Sword, in the LP of Skyward Sword, I, I believe I had freshly finished Okami, and so it was it was on my mind, you know? And in the LP of Skyward Sword, I tried it, and I don't think it did it. So it is this game, and not the Nunchucks, which I don't like. So if you guys know why that is, go ahead and tell me. But anyway, we have a Demon Gate here, which I'm actually going to show, because this is the second battle we have with Snarling Beast, and I want to show it off at least one more time this episode. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, also, I need more Godhood. Wow. So, dead fish, which we f faced before, although, when we faced them last... I need to power slice you down. Um, when we faced them last, they actually... Um, we missed their floor, floor finishers, both of them. Though, with Snarling Beast, because it's much more powerful, we can actually get floral finishers. Like so. Isn't that nifty? Now, I'm fairly certain... Oh, no, bad, 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 Wow, that was so bad. Oh, that was close. Okay. Uh, with the ink bullet power, where you just draw, write dots, it actually won't overkill enemies, to my knowledge. Also, that's bad. I might lose all my ink. In fact, I did, I did, I did. Actually, uh, do I want to use an ink fin... No, I'm just going to have to take the Mist Floor Avenger. It's actually a really good way to kill the uh, the dead fish to use ink bullet, though it uses a ton of ink. I just realized that. I, I didn't. Th I thought it only used one ink pot, but it does not. So yeah, you want to be very careful when you use that that technique. Though it is good for defeating dead fish. I just want to point that out. Uh, and dead. Okay, bloom is your floral finisher. Nope, bloom is your floral finisher. There we go. Only one missed Flora Fincher. Nice. And then we're back up to Yellow Godhood. Very good. That's the kind of battling I like. Okay, with that out of the way, we will restore this area. Which was very empty beforehand, but now we have Bamboo. And 15 Praise. And also... Tigers. These are not enemies. These are very nice Tigers. They'll, they'll growl at us a little bit, but... After that, they're, they're pretty chill. 
They're pretty cool with us. They're huge, but and they'll roar at us, but after that, they're pretty cool. They'll just lay here and growl at us again. I guess they're just establishing their territory. Let me go and feed them. They eat meat, so let me go and feed them and then leave them in their lazy peace, even though they seem a little bit fat already. I don't know, maybe all tigers are that, that build. Because whenever I see a tiger, it always looks fat like that. Maybe that's just normal, I don't know. I, I don't know tigers, I don't have a cat. <laughs> Which is probably surprising, because most LPers have cats. <laughs> but I don't have a cat. But I do have two dogs, which is nice and bad at the same time. So, uh, I believe there's some animals over here. No? Okay. Well, where I want to go is this area over here. There are a bunch of holes, and in these holes are moles. Let's say hi. Hey, hey, hey! Stop right there! How dare you walk around our turf without permission? I'm sorry. I won't let you get away with it. I'm Molly of the Molsters! Molster leader, Molly. A lot, of, uh, all of the territory beneath Taka Pass is under our control. Well, we're not under Taka Pass, are we? We can't. We just can't allow people to come wandering in as they please. How are we supposed to relax with intruders like you around? I'll have to get you to leave some of that behind to make up for it. Some of what? You know what I mean? That gold-colored thing used in shops. Uh, gold dust? We don't have any, bro. Huh? Oh, I, I get it. You're just a pack of thieves extorting money. Oh, he wants gold, straight up money, okay. We should teach you a lesson. Ha <laughs> ha you've got some nerve. Fine, if that's the way you want it, you'll regret this. Come on, man, Molsters, the special dust cloud formation. So this is sort of like a mini game. What you want to do is chase these moles around, and when you see Molly, you want to headbutt him and he'll throw something up in the air. Herg, it'll take a lot more than that to hurt me. If you want to fight, let's fight properly. Each consecutive phase, as you might expect, will get harder. He's over there! Oh, I missed him. Why did I miss him? Uh, the little moles will hit you, but if you just chase after mole, you'll be fine. Gurg! Trying to pick a fight, are you? Then try this on for size. This is the hardest phase of them all, as you might expect, but you should actually not try to run around. You should actually just stay by one. And hopefully he will come near you? Maybe not. Okay, maybe they have AI. I don't know. Oh, he's over there. He's over there. He's over there. No. Uh, he's over there. And it's daytime. Thank Or nighttime. Thanks, game. Thanks, game. I really appreciate that. He's over there. He's over there. I know it. Yes! Oh, man. That was, that was good. Mind games were strong. I don't understand it. How do you manage to stand up to our special dust cloud trick? <laughs> Had enough of hard-headed Ami? That'll teach ya. Don't mess with the gods, Furface. Crime doesn't pay. Remember that. I expect you guys to stay on the straight and narrow now. I do not- I do know the difference between right and wrong. It's just that, well, I was lonely. No matter how long I wait down here, no one comes to see me. That's why I behaved the way I did. I just wanted to get your attention, that's all. Please, white doggy, will you be my friend? He's also... Wow, well, he's he's big. I didn't notice that. <laughs> I promise I'll behave myself from now on. Honest. You'll, you're just what I need, doggy. If you stay, then I won't have to be lonely anymore. Um, this is just getting stranger by the minute. I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't show my feelings like this. I'll go back underground now and shed my tears in private. I suppose it's goodbye then. Come back and visit soon, won't you, doggy? And with that, they're gone after a strangely sad moment. Like, I don't know what was up with that. Also, this is actually a legit hole. It's not just like a, a model. Interesting, okay. So, the, he dropped this yellow thing. It doesn't look like gold dust, but it looks like something we won't be able to make use of. Unless it's sake, then we will drink it. But I don't think it's sake, so we should head to the merchant to sell it or do something with it. So let's go ahead and do that. If you remember, the merchant, the tea merchant, actually mentioned that the mole stole something from him. So this might actually be it. There was an, uh, there was an awful curse zone here before, but it's gone now. It should be business as usual again. But these mischievous moles ha took my most precious of belongings. I can't possibly l get on with any, get on with any work without it. Hey, 
That's my precious teacup, isn't it? Did you snatch it back from those meddlesome moles for me? You offered teacup. I have to I have to read that in my, uh, that voice every single time. Thank you. This is my good luck charm for doing good business. Well, one good deed deserves another. There's also another saying that says no good deed goes unpunished. So what is it going to give us? Golden mushroom. Or sorry, you obtained golden mushroom. What do you think? It's pretty impressive, eh? A customer of mine gave it to me as a payment a while back. It's got such a divine air, I have no idea what to do with it. It's yours now anyway, pooch. Do with it what you will. Thank you. And also, before I... I want to actually talk to the customer. But before I do that, I want to dig this up. Because it probably is something good. Not a stray bead, but it's probably something good. And it is. It's glass beads, which sell for a little bit. Nice. Okay, let me go and talk to this guy. Because he actually has something... Not for us, but something that's interesting. Who'd have thought the curse zone, cursed would be blown away like that? Now I can get through the city checkpoint and make my way home. Not before I've run that errand in Kusa Village, of course. But it's hard to forget about those terrifying growls I heard. Going back there isn't exactly an appealing idea. Yeah, I don't know anything about growls, but now I guess now I do. My wife asked me to get her one of those famous Kusa pinwheels. She'll give me a wallop if I go back empty-handed. I don't know what, what's worse. Those growls are an angry wife. Hmm, what if those growls... ...are from your angry wife? Aliens. <laughs> uh, I couldn't resist that. But anyway, that, that gold mushroom, that golden mushroom that we were given, is part of a trading quest, which will happen later so we want to actually whoa I wasn't looking I was looking down at my recording and I didn't realize that this happened uh, so let me go ahead and defeat this guy and I guess cut back after this is done I didn't realize that I I had run into a demon scroll very nice 1200 yen and I actually didn't miss any floral finishers, so that probably made up for the ones I missed earlier. But anyway, after that interruption, let's go ahead and continue- Whoa! We have 40,000 yen! We have 40,000 yen, guys! Wow! Actually, I want it to be daytime, because the animals will be out. I didn't think about that one. Okay, let me go ahead and- there we go, okay. Uh, that was a bad decision. Hopefully we didn't miss many animals. Probably in the end slate, I'll walk around and check. So anyway, uh, this building over here, we actually I actually don't want to go into that yet, because that's something that won't become relevant till later, so I might as well save it. Okay, uh, let's go this way, keep looking for animals, because animals is really where it's at, because we get praise from them, for pretty much 500 yen we can get a lot of praise. So, wow, this river's dried up, wow. There seems to be like a, yeah, it's, it's dried up, it's very shallow down there, but it's also very murky and gross. So, I guess it's really stagnant down there. So we should probably fix that. Let's go to the top of the river. Over here. And while I run by, let's go ahead and bloom that from a very long distance. I didn't think it would actually work from that long. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and... Where are we going? Oh, this way. What's up here, though? What is up here? Huh. We'll have to check that out later. I don't know. Uh, I, we can't actually get up there, that's strange. But we can get over here. So let's go ahead and talk to this girl. What do you have to say? Don't be scared. I'm, I'm just a wolf. I don't understand. The mermaid spring is, uh, spring's always given us such lovely, fresh water. How can it dry up all of a sudden? Her literal name is Spring Girl. First name Spring, last name Girl. I don't know. Maybe S Spring's actually a pretty cute name. I guess... Maybe I'll name my, my daughter that, although I do plan to name my daughter Morgan, not Spring. I don't know, maybe if I have two daughters, I don't know. Okay, uh, that's interesting, okay, animals talk a pass. Um, we'll deal with that. Can we dig here, or cherry bomb? No, we can't. So I guess the only thing for it is to deal with this demon gate, which I'll actually cut through, because we've fought too many things this episode already. So, I will tell you what has was in this demon gate on the other side. Be right back. After I run into the gate. Okay, there we go. 1700 yen! I didn't do too great on time. I actually missed killing a yellow imp once, but I didn't miss any floral finishers, and that's all that matters. 
Also, all that matters is that the spring is back, and... Oh, we, we repaired the waterfall up there. Okay. So, that's good. I was kind of worried about that, because I was thinking we'd have to restore two things. So, before we talk to that bir the, the bird... Where'd I get bird? That girl. I'm going to feed these deer. So, be right back. Okay, sorry about that. The recording was lagging a little bit, so I had to check that out. So, uh, let's go and talk to that girl, which is over here. There we go. Hey, Spring. How you doing? Spring, let me... Thank you. Let me talk to you. It's so wonderful that the Mermaid Spring has come back to life. Maybe it's thanks to the legendary power of the mermaids. Have you heard the story? This spring's like a path for them. Sometimes they come up from the bottom of the ocean. There are other springs just like this all, all across Nippon. The mermaids come up to the ground to visit their favorite places. See? Part of the water's surface is shining faintly. If you throw a mermaid coin in there, a new, a pa uh, ugh, the path will open up. So, what she's talking about are mermaid coins, which are basically warp points, or the mermaid springs are the warp points, but the mermaid coins are the uh, things that give you the ability to warp. You will basically, if you jump in here, and if you had a mermaid coin, I don't think we have one on us. No, we do not. Uh, we can use it and then warp to another um, mermaid spring somewhere in Nippon. So, that's actually very interesting. See that light? This is a special place known as a mermaid spring. There's a wonderful legend about beautiful mermaids appearing here. They say that other mermaid spring. They say there are other mermaid springs throughout the land. You should visit them when it, wherever they may be, and that will basically enable you to discover them and they will be shown on your map when you use a mermaid coin. Sometimes the game will will require that you backtrack and when it does it's actually usually very good about giving you mermaid coins so it'll actually help you backtrack instead of actually running the entire distance. So that's very very nice. It's a very good reward. Well not reward, it's a very good mechanic that we'll be using at some some point during the LP. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and run over here. Yeah, because there is a demon gate over here, also a tree which I should bloom. And also, I didn't mention what enemies were in that demon gate because the recording glitched. So I should probably mention that there was a, let's see, ah, memory. A dead fish, yeah, a dead fish and a yellow, yeah, and a yellow imp that I got both floral finishers on. Ink Bullet is actually astoundingly good at killing dead fish. In fact, let me show it here, because there's probably one in here. Okay, so with the dead fish, there there are two dead fish. Uh, I'm not sure if I've shown this earlier, but if you power slash them, and then you go ahead and hit them, and then what you do is you don't want to do this, where uh, the brush is having the smokes around it. You want to do it so the background is the wall, and then you want to give them a ton of dots. It actually will not overkill them. It counts as one hit. So that's very good, and I accidentally released the thing. So you actually uh, cannot overkill them with this move, unless they're already dead. But yeah, you can do this, and then you can get their floor finisher. And then I can run out of ink. We really could use more ink pots. Uh, let me go ahead and power slash both of these things at once. The dead fish and its blade. There we go. Uh, let me go ahead and hit him. And I don't want to... You know what? I think I'm good. Uh, let me go ahead and hit him. Hopefully I have enough ink for this. There we go. That was so close. But I would used just a little bit of the ink bolt power and... Got the floor finishers on both of the dead fish. Uh, this guy, can I dot him? No, I cannot. Okay. Let me wait for him to come out, and then I can finish this battle out. Uh, he's going to come out this one. Jump over. Now he's confused, and now I can finish him off. There we go. Dead. I'm actually getting much better at floor finishing. Which is very nice. I, I attribute it to this weapon and the fact that I'm not using a rosary anymore. I really don't like using rosaries for main battle because they can overkill enemies so easily. It's insane how much they do that. Also, they because all of their hits are much longer than, than a normal weapon, it kind of keeps you in place longer and can get you vulnerable. Even though you can cancel it with this, I just don't always think to, so they're kind of inconvenient. Okay, there, there's a guy over there, which I'll talk to after I feed these deer. 
Okay, uh, 13 praise. We have gotten about 70 praise so far, and it's going to be close to 80 now that we do this. And let's go ahead and feed these foxes. They eat meat, so I'll feed them. And then we will get a lot of praise from them, because animals are giving us a ton of praise, uh, usually. So that's really nice. Now, actually, something I just thought of that would be good for the end slate. Since I'm going through throughout the episode, and also that stone slab we cannot do with it anything with. But since I'm going through the episode um, feeding animals, I think the end slate, it'd be a good idea for me to feed the night animals in the end slate. So I'm not having to show that in like the actual episode where I'm commentating. I think that'd be a good idea. Of course, now that I say that, I'm probably not going to do that. Or vice versa, like if we started off at night, then I'll, I'll wait till day and then feed him then. So I think I might do that. So let's go ahead and talk to this guy. There, there, there! There it is! My pendulum's calling out to me! The treasure must be buried here! What are you staring at, Pooch? Wanna help me dig up the treasure? My pendulum showed me where it was, but I've completely lost track of where that was now. There must be some kind of clue hidden around here somewhere. Okay, very interesting. Really interesting, that's strange. Okay, well, we can't actually do anything with him yet, so we'll just keep him in mind in case we get something that will enable us to do something with him. Alright, uh, we're nearing the end of the episode. My timer's kind of run out. But before we do that, we actually I want to actually feed these horses and get a stray bead, so I'll be right back. All right, here are there's eight preys, and we have 250 now. That means we've gotten 80 preys this episode, I believe. Actually, no, I think we started this episode 240, so we've gotten over 100. So yeah, that's really cool. Uh, let's see, my guide. Let me consult my guide real quick to see where the stray bead is. Okay, my guide simply says that the stray bead is buried somewhere near Bingo, which is what this na guy's name is. So let me look for that. Thank goodness it's almost nighttime and it's almost the end of, uh, end of the episode. If the night does come, then I should be able to see it easier, but I'm not seeing it right now. I guess maybe he was talking about the, uh, I guess he was talking about the stray bead when he was talking about treasure being buried. Okay, nighttime. Thank goodness. Okay, where is it? Oh boy, where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is over there. Okay. I would not have looked over there because that doesn't really seem to be that close to bingo. I guess that's the only reference point they had. But anyway, here's a stray bead. And with that, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. And next time, we're going to be going either to the north where that gate is on the map, or to the south, where that gate thing is on the map. I'm thinking we're going to be going to the south. So, I'll see you guys next time as I run across this area, blooming things, and getting f animals and feeding them. So, see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Okami.